Welcome to Advanced Learning Tutoring. This is the Physics Playlist. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Magnetism and Electromagnetism Magnetic Fields The region around a magnet where a force acts on another magnet or on a magnetic material such as iron, steel, cobalt or nickel is called the magnetic field. The force between a magnet and a magnetic material is always one of attraction. This is the case in a permanent magnet. A permanent magnet may be made up of cobalt or nickel. There is always a force of attraction or repulsion in a permanent magnet. This is different to an induced magnet. The strength of the magnetic field depends on the distance from the magnet. The field is strongest at the poles of the magnet. Permanent magnets have a north and a south pole. And the direction of the magnetic field is the line from the north to the south. To investigate and find out the area surrounding a magnet where the magnetic field is, you can use plotting compasses. Place a plotting compass around a bar magnet and mark with a cross the direction the arrow is pointing. Joining these crosses together, you will be able to see the magnetic field. You can also use iron filings. Scatter iron filings on a sheet of paper and hold a bar magnet below the sheet of paper you will see a pattern in line with the magnetic field. Poles of a magnet. The poles of a magnet are the places where the magnetic forces are strongest. When two magnets are brought close together, they exert a force on each other. Two like poles repel each other, for example, a north and a north. Two unlike poles attract each other, for example, a north and a south. Attraction and repulsion between two magnetic poles are examples of a non-contact force. A permanent magnet produces its own magnetic field. An induced magnet, or sometimes known as a temporary magnet, is a material that becomes a magnet when it is placed into a magnetic field. For example, rubbing a paperclip on the end of a permanent magnet, that paperclip is now magnetized. Removing the paperclip from the magnet or the magnetic field removes the magnetism. Induced magnetism always causes a force of attraction. For example, the induced magnet of our paperclip will only ever attract other paperclips there will be no force of repulsion. When removed from the magnetic field, an induced magnet loses most or all of its magnetism quickly. The motor effect. When a current flows through a conducting wire, a magnetic field is produced around the wire. The strength of the magnetic field depends on the current through the wire and the distance from the wire. Shaping a wire to form a solenoid, which means coils of wire, increases the strength of the magnetic field created by the current through the wire. The more coils, the stronger the magnetic field. The magnetic field inside a solenoid is strong and uniform. The magnetic field around a solenoid has a similar shape to that of a bar magnet. Adding an iron core increases the strength of the magnetic field of a solenoid. An electromagnet is a solenoid with an iron core. Using your right hand, shape into a thumb up or thumb down. Your thumb indicating the direction of the current flow through the wire and the direction that your fingers are facing into the palm of your hand will be in the direction of the magnetic field. Current flows from positive to negative, so if we have an upwards direction current flow, the magnetic field 
will be coming in towards the palm of your hand, north to south. And vice versa, if your thumb was down, in a thumbs down position, where the current is flowing down the wire, still from positive to negative. Fleming's left hand rule for the motor effect. When a conductor carrying a current is placed in a magnetic field, the magnet producing the field and the conductor exert a force on each other. This is called the motor effect. Motors can be used in fans or in drills. Place your thumb, your index finger and your middle finger at 90 degrees to each other on your left hand. Your thumb points in the direction of the force exerted on the wire. Your index finger pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. This is from north to south. Your middle finger will be pointing in the direction of the current. This is the current flowing through the wire in the magnetic field. And this will be flowing from positive to negative. So point your index finger from north to south in the magnetic field and your middle finger from positive to negative in the direction of the current flow. The direction that your thumb points as a result is the direction of the force. To increase the size of the force on the conductor, you can either increase the current or increase the strength of the magnet. To calculate the size of the force, you multiply magnetic flux density, measured in Tesla, current, measured in amps, by the length in meters. This equation is given on the physics equation sheet. Fleming's left hand rule, exam practice. We have copper rails with a copper wire placed on top inside a horseshoe magnet labelled with the North and the South Pole. We see it is connected to a DC power supply with a switch. Looking at your battery, the positive terminal is labelled. That way we can indicate and we can work out which way the current is flowing through the copper wire. As current flows from positive to the negative terminal, we follow out from the positive terminal and we come down the copper wire towards us. So the direction of current flow is coming towards us down the copper wire. Using the Fleming's left hand rule, describe how the direction of the copper wire will move. So this question we want to describe how we use the Fleming's left hand rule. We only actually get one mark for indicating the correct direction of the wire. The majority of the marks come from describing Fleming's left hand rule. Point the first two fingers and thumb of the left hand so they are at right angles to each other. Point the first finger or the index finger in the direction of the magnetic field which is from north to south. So we should be pointing our index finger upwards. Point the second or the middle finger in the direction of the current flow from positive to negative. So we rotate our left hand keeping our index finger pointing upwards but rotate our hand so that our middle finger is pointing towards us in the direction of the current flow. That leaves our thumb pointing in the direction of the force which is in this case to the left. Loudspeakers. A coil of wire is positioned in the gap between the north and the south poles of a cylindrical magnet. A paper cone on the outside allows the vibrations to be directed. Explain how the loudspeaker converts current in an electrical circuit to a sound wave. The current in the electrical circuit is varying the current that passes through the coil the coil experiences a force, inwards or outwards. Reversing the current reverses the force. The size of the current affects the size of the force. 
Varying the current causes the coil to vibrate. The cone vibrating causes air molecules to move. The movement of the air molecules produces the pressure variations in the air needed for a sound wave. The air molecules bunch together forming compressions and spread out forming rare refractions, typical of a sound wave, like a longitudinal wave. Induced potential, transformers and the national grid. If an electrical conductor moves relative to a magnetic field, or if there is a change in the magnetic field around a conductor, a potential difference is induced across the ends of a conductor. If the conductor is part of a complete circuit, a current is induced in the conductor. This is called the generator effect. An induced current generates a magnetic field that opposes the original change, either the movement of the conductor or the change in the magnetic field. Moving a magnet in and out or backwards and forwards through a coil of wire induces this potential difference. Uses of the generator effect. The generator effect is used in an alternator to generate AC, alternating current, and in a dynamo to generate DC, direct current. Looking at a graph of induced potential difference versus time, we see an up and downwards curve. When the coil is at zero degrees, the coil is moving parallel to the direction of the magnetic field, so no potential difference is induced. When the coil is at 90 degrees, the coil is moving at 90 degrees to the direction of the magnetic field so the induced potential is at its maximum. When the coil is at 180 degrees, the coil is again moving parallel to the direction of the magnetic field, so no potential difference is induced. When the coil is at 270 degrees, the coil is moving again at 90 degrees to the direction of the magnetic field so the induced potential difference is at its maximum. Here, the induced potential travels in the opposite direction to what it did when at 90 degrees, giving our positive and negative potential differences. Use of the generator effect in a dynamo to produce DC or direct current. In a dynamo, a split ring commutator changes the coil connections every half turn. As the induced potential is about to change direction, the connections are reversed. This means that the current to the external circuit always flows in the same direction, typical of that of a direct current. If we look at the graph of the induced potential difference versus time, we see that the current only flows in the positive direction. When the coil is at zero degrees, the coil is moving parallel to the direction of the magnetic field, so no potential difference is induced. When the coil is at 90 degrees, the coil is moving at 90 degrees to the direction of the magnetic field, so the induced potential is at its maximum. When the coil is at 180 degrees, the coil is moving again parallel to the direction of the magnetic field, so no potential difference is induced. When the coil is at 270 degrees, the coil is moving at 90 degrees to the direction of the magnetic field, so the induced potential is at its maximum. Here, the induced potential difference travels in the same direction as when the coil was at 90 degrees. Microphones. The generator effect is used in an alternator to generate AC, alternating current, 
and in a dynamo to generate DC, direct current. In a microphone, pressure variations in sound waves cause the flexible diaphragm to vibrate. The vibrations of the diaphragm cause vibrations in the coil. The coil moves relative to a permanent magnet, so a potential difference is induced in the coil. The coil is part of a complete circuit, so the induced potential difference causes a current to flow around the circuit. The changing size and direction of the induced current matches the vibrations of the coil. The electrical signals generated match the pressure variations in the sound waves. Transformers A transformer is a device that can change the potential difference or voltage of an alternating current. A step-up transformer increases the voltage, a step-down transformer decreases the voltage. We see transformers being used as part of the national grid supplying mains electricity to the home. When a transformer is working, a primary voltage drives an alternating current through the primary coil, or the first coil. The primary coil current produces a magnetic field which changes as the current changes. The iron core increases the strength of the magnetic field. The changing magnetic field induces a changing potential difference in the secondary coil. The induced potential difference produces an alternating current in the external circuit. Transformers and calculations. In a step-up transformer, the voltage through the secondary coil is greater than the voltage through the primary coil. And in a step-down transformer, the voltage through the secondary coil is less than the voltage in the primary coil. If transformers were 100% efficient, the electrical power output would equal the electrical power input. Looking at the equation, primary voltage over secondary voltage equals number of turns on primary coil over number of turns on secondary coil. We can use this to calculate voltage or number of turns in the coils for either primary or secondary coils. A question. A mains transformer has 11,500 turns on its primary coil and 600 turns on its secondary coil. Calculate the voltage obtained from the secondary coil. Now the mains transformer will have a voltage of 230 volts as it is mains electricity. That will be through the primary coil. To find the voltage on the secondary coil, we do the voltage through the primary coil multiplied by the number of turns on the secondary coil over the number of turns on the primary coil. So that is 230 multiplied by 600 over 11,500 to give us an answer of 12 volts. The transformer in this example is a step-down transformer. This is because there are fewer turns on the secondary coil and there is a smaller voltage on the secondary coil in comparison to the primary.